Hi everyone, so I normally make videos about languages, but I'm kind of an amateur musician myself. Uh, I've played guitar for over 10 years, play piano, play drums, but I can't read sheet music at all. And I'm not the only guitarist who has this problem. So to name a few people, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, The Beatles, Elvis, all couldn't read sheet music. Why? Because it's unnecessarily complicated. Let's look at why. So we have all the musical notes, here they are starting from C. So we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to C again. Then of course we have all the black notes. These are either sharp or flat of the notes before or after. So this is standard sheet music. These lines here represent which notes to play. The top notes are the higher notes and the bottom notes are the lower notes. Normally on piano you play the higher notes with the right hand and the lower notes with the left hand. Here we have the time signature which tells you the value of each note and the beats in each bar. Here we have the clefs which tells you which range these notes are. Normally these don't change. Here we have the BPM or beats per minute which tells you the speed of the song. So the middle note here is C and that is middle C on a keyboard. And the way this works is, you basically go up one note each time. So C, D, E, F, and then go all the way back up. So G, A, B, C, E, D, E, D, E, F. And the same way the other way. So we go up, or go down, we go B, A, and then all the way down. Okay, so here we are in musical. I'm just going to create a note. This will be a G note. And we can make this go higher if we want. So going up, that's a G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and we get to C. This is middle C. We can also put it here on this, and that's that's middle C as well. These are the same notes. If we go higher though on this, it gets very confusing because the lines keep going up, and you've got to keep reference. This is C, D, E. This is linked to the bottom notes, and this is linked to the higher notes. So this depends. So the sharps are normally written with a sharp here or a flat here if you go down. Not always though. I'm going to make this key B major now. And now this basically says that on these notes, these are sharps. So if I put a note here, for example, this is now A sharp. It's not A. If you do it and make it like this, it will show this sign, which means it's not part of the scale uh, or it's a different note. And you actually have to specify. So if I, for example, make, let's make more than one note, and I'll do this. So here I've put, I've specified, so the rest of these notes will be A, not A sharp. But if I have to, if I do this, then this is, oh, that's sharp, and then that's A again, because that shows this, and this is, this shows it's sharp, this shows it's not sharp, this shows it's sharp again, so this one will be sharp afterwards. So this is, so this is a lot to remember for a beginner. And you also need to know a lot about scales and which ones are sharp, which ones are flat. Then we have the different note lengths. So this is called a whole note, so it means it lasts the whole time. That lasts the whole bar or whatever the bottom number is here. You can also make them half notes. That lasts for two beats. You can make them quarter notes. This is basically a a note per beat. So one, two, three, four. You can make them eighth notes. So this will be one and two and three and four and. You can make them sixteenth notes. So whatever notation system you create, they have to show which note to play, the speed of the notes, and the length of the notes. So I generally can't read these things, and what I normally do is just look at the bottom left corner and it tells me the note, G3. Wait, what's this, G3? This is called scientific pitch notation. Scientific pitch notation is a system where we take the musical note names and combine them with the number of the octave they are in. So we have the notes and we have the octaves. Notes are recorded in hertz, and this is the amount of vibrations per second. The full range goes from C0 to G10. However, most music doesn't go this high or low. The lowest note on a piano is A0, 
and the highest note is C8. So if I play the lowest note on the piano, it's A0. And if I play the next A, it'll be A1. The next A, A2. The next A, A3. Next A, A4. And it keeps going up, A5, 6, 7. And middle C is C4. So wait a minute. So there already exists a system that codifies every note logically and you don't need to guess what it is. Hmm. So here is old sheet music and here is the new sheet music. It's exactly the same. Didn't change a thing. Let's look at some notes. So I want to play this, which is this. And in my system this will be this. So on the right hand we're playing C4, E4, G4. So you write C4, E4, G4. The bottom line is the first note, or the lowest note, and then if you're playing multiple notes at the same time, you just put them above. And then we're playing C3 on the left hand, so we just put this C3. And then we put whole note at the bottom. So say, this is a whole note, it lasts for four beats. Okay, another piece of music here. This is this sound. This we represent like this. So we're going to move the whole note to the bottom, C3, and then we have C, C, E, G, E, and these are and these are quarter notes. So we basically have a circle and a line, like before, a black circle and a line. Uh, you could use whatever design you wanted. I just made a random circle with a line. You could copy that. I just was too lazy to copy it. So another piece of music, which sounds like this. At the bottom we have half notes, uh, C major, E minor, C major, E minor, and then the top half we have, um, so the, the half notes with the, is a empty circle, not a black circle, a white circle, and the top half we have the black notes again, but they're connected with a black line, which means eighth notes, like in standard notation above, it's exactly the same. And maybe you're thinking, you know, these are easy songs, let's look at a hard song, okay, let's look at Dance of Eternity by Dream Theatre. Now this is the pre-chorus to Dance of Eternity, which sounds like this. And in my system, we simply just write the chords, and they're 16th notes, so you write the chords, and there's no left-handed part. And the sharps and the flats, we simply uh, just write sharp and flat. That's it. If it's sharp, you write sharp. If it's flat, you write flat. That's it. And the next section, Here we have uh, some 16th notes that goes into 8th notes. Again, we do exactly the same as regular notation, just 2 to 1, 2 to 1. Uh, and the rest is basically pretty, pretty self-explanatory what's happening here. And the last section, a bit more complicated this because we have triplets, but the triplets are exactly the same. So here we have a 5, a five triplet, 6 triplet, 6 triplet, we just write 6 and 6 and we write the dots again. So basically this is exactly the same and also the pauses at the end are exactly the same. Why change something that isn't broken? Make this make the pauses exactly the same. Okay, let's do a comparison. Which one's easier to work out the note? All right, so you can pause this and try to work out what these notes are. And here it is in my notation. So try to guess what these notes, uh, yeah, it, it, it kind of tells you what the notes are. You don't need to guess or work them out. So the first one's F4, A4, C5, and then E5, B5, D6, like, it tells you. So I basically just had an idea for this just because it made sense. I found out that scientific pitch notation exists. Why don't we use it, if, it, if that makes sense? Um, of course, I'm just an amateur musician. I don't really know what the limitations to this would be. I kind of need feedback. I'm just surprised no one had this idea before because it seems to make sense to me. Let me know if you think. Let me know what the limitations could this be. Obviously, there's a lot of tradition in music, and but this doesn't need to replace anything. You could simply just use this as a beginner stage. So if you have a beginner who's learning piano, let's have them learn sheet music as well because that's going to be easy for them to do. 
this is a big barrier to entry. You can simply use this for beginners and then go to sheet music later when you're more advanced. It could be there just to help people who can't read it or to make a bridge between those two. It doesn't need to replace anything. So this is just a random idea I had. Obviously it could look any different. I mean you could put, for example, you could put the note part above, you could put it below. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter how it looks. It's just simply this is easier to read, easier to learn and uh, I want more people to get into music, not less. And if you make the system ridiculously complicated, you're going to put people off, which is the main problem. I'm not really an expert in music at all, so I don't know what the limitations could be. Also, I don't really care about copywriting this. Anyone can use it. I don't really care. I just want music to be more, more popular and more accessible to the average person. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next time. And thanks for watching.